everyone. It's a cold and nasty day for flying, and i uh, decided to put together a training video on uh, the proper ways to de-ice and, uh, and handle icing conditions in these citations. So um, we're uh, sitting on the ramp right now waiting for a de-ice truck to come to us, and uh, the, uh, the first thing I'll show you here is in uh, ground icing conditions, just a reminder that uh, we need the uh, ground idle up in the high position. Uh, that uh, keeps the uh, engine spinning up uh, at 52% N2, uh, keeps those uh, engines spooled up, and uh, we need the engine ice protection switches turned on down here uh, for any snow or whatnot that's getting ingested into the engines right now and keep the uh, um, stator vanes and all that uh, protected. Uh, and uh, then uh, in uh, preparation for the uh, de-ice process, uh, we'll turn the pressure source selector over here uh, when we see the truck arrive, we'll turn it from normal to off, and that will keep any fluid from getting ingested into the engines and uh, ultimately the bleeder system, and um, that's what the uh, AFM calls for. Another point to take note of here is that uh, when we're spraying uh, de-ice fluid, we want the flaps up in the fully up position, and then we'll reset those for takeoff. Uh, and uh, since we're going to have type 4 uh, anti-ice fluid on the airplane, uh, we're also going to be uh, doing a flap 7 takeoff, which is not required, but it is recommended in the 500 series citations. All right, so we've got the uh, de-ice truck pulling up. We've been communicating with them on the radio. Uh, we're configured for uh, getting sprayed by having the uh, pressurization source selector turned off, flaps retracted, and uh, turned into the wind because uh, one of the uh, important things uh, when you're de-icing is to not spray the uh, fluid on the, how should I say this, the reverse side of the aircraft. Uh, you don't want to be jamming it up into the um, control surfaces and things like that. You just want it to flow back off the uh, the rear of the wing instead of shooting the rear of the wing and having it get uh, up uh, underneath the, uh, the flaps and ailerons. This is type 1 fluid being applied right now. This is an anti-ice fluid. I'm sorry, a uh, de-ice fluid. This is clearing ice from the aircraft. Uh, it uh, is applied hot, and uh, the uh, you know it, it will clear ice. But uh, then, in these really uh, extremely cold temperatures right now, it's uh, oh, I think it's uh, about five degrees Fahrenheit or so, uh, well below freezing. Um, that that type one fluid will actually refreeze. Um, if we let it sit for more than about five minutes, uh, it, it, it really has no anti-icing protection at all. Um, so we're going to apply type 4 fluid on top of that, which is an anti-icing fluid. And uh, that's good for quite a while. We can probably be on the, on the ground for 45 minutes or something uh, before that starts breaking down and needing to get cleared. All right, so this green fluid here, this is the uh, type 4 fluid being applied now. Uh, it's a pretty goopy mixture. It's a, a thicker mixture, and this is actually applied cold. This is uh, an anti-ice uh, mixture that will basically um, prevent any uh, precipitation or blowing snow that blows onto the aircraft from uh, sticking to the airplane and freezing. And uh, this, uh, this mixture here, uh, because it's thicker, it uh, needs a higher airspeed to uh, blow off of the aircraft on takeoff. So that's one of the reasons why we do the, the flap 7 takeoff, uh, is uh, that higher liftoff speed uh, will help ensure that the uh, Type 4 gets uh, cleared of the airplane as we're rolling down the runway and, and lifting off. All right, so the last step in the process here is uh, they're actually going to do a quick tactile check for us and uh, make sure that they cleared what they needed to clear. Yeah, you guys are looking good. Safe travels. Thank you. Have a good one. Get warm. And, uh, of course, we'll let our company know that we got sprayed with Type uh, 4. Also, I got you guys at uh, about 22 Type 1 and 16 Type 4. Thank you very much. Those numbers are so we can check the receipt later, because this isn't necessarily a cheap process. Uh, that's how many gallons they sprayed. Um, and uh, the last thing I'd say here is that uh, we'll let our company know that uh, 
that we got sprayed uh, with uh, de-ice fluid so that uh, when we, we return back to base at the end of the trip, we can uh, get cleaned because, like I said, this is goopy stuff that'll, that'll um, clear off in flight to a certain extent, but it also kind of gets down into crevices and kind of makes a mess of the airplane. So uh, unfortunately, it'll need to be cleaned uh, at some point in the not-too-distant future to keep from uh, getting on everybody's clothes and bags and things later. That's the de-ice process, and uh, I guess the, the last thing I should say here, too, give you a shot of this. Uh, we can't forget to set flap 7 for departure, and uh, if uh, my co-pilot here could uh, turn the pressurization source selector up to normal, we have that reset, and uh, now we're ready to fly. Okay, we're up on top of the blizzard now. We made it out of there. Everything's running smooth. And uh, as I uh, was thinking more about uh, some of the details that I wasn't able to explain in the moment with de-icing, uh, there's uh, some information that's useful to know, and it's related to the uh, holdover times for the uh, Type 1 and Type 4 fluids that we use. Uh, you can reference a document called the FAA Holdover Time Guidelines, and uh, in our operation, uh, you know, we have to be clear that we're not using this as a uh, definitive marker of, uh, of a clean wing. You know, it's not like uh, if we reference the uh, holdover time guidelines that if it says 10 minutes, we just don't even bother looking. Um, you know, it, we still uh, have to, at a minimum, look and uh, under certain circumstances do tactile checks uh, to make sure that there's a, a clean wing. Uh, but this uh, holdover time guideline can be very useful for planning a flight and uh, knowing what to expect under the conditions you're dealing with. I was talking to a, a newer captain this morning about uh, what we were dealing with with this blizzard, and uh, one of the things that uh, I pointed out here is that uh, when you're deciding if you need both type 1 and type 4, or if you can get by with just type 1, uh, you know, things like that, uh, you can reference this uh, holdover time guideline, um, and uh, you know in the in the situation today that we are dealing with, uh, it's really cold, really windy, and we had light snow falling. Uh, so when we look at the holdover times for uh, aluminum uh, aircraft and uh, Type One fluid, we see that if the temperature is below 14 degrees Fahrenheit with light snow we only have a holdover time of four to seven minutes, meaning that that fluid is gonna break down and refreeze within four to seven minutes under those conditions. Um, so that's really not long enough to, to get out to the runway and take off safely. Um, but you know, there's other times where if it's uh, 28 degrees and uh, light snow, you can spray that type one and actually have it work uh, for 11 to 18 minutes. And in a scenario like that, you might be able to get by with just spraying type one and, and not needing type four. When it comes to the type four fluid, there's a whole bunch of different brands and mixtures that can be used. And uh, what you would need to do is talk to the line service personnel who are gonna be applying the fluid and uh, see what specific brand and mix they're using. And then uh, you can reference the FAA holdover time guidelines in the booklet and and look up that specific brand and mixture and see what uh, performance that's going to give you on the on the conditions that you're dealing with and uh, make your decisions from there. Now from an economic perspective, something to keep in mind is uh, the, the economics of de-icing and when it makes sense to do it or when it makes sense to do something different. Um, on this particular occasion that I'm showing you in this video, uh, we used 22 gallons of type 1 and 20, uh, correction, uh, 16 gallons of type 4. And uh, when I uh, look at the pricing on this, it shows $31 a gallon for type 1 and $36 a gallon for type 4. So uh, we ended up spelling, spending about uh, $1,258, it says, uh, for this DI service. And, uh, you know, and this could be viewed as very cheap or very expensive depending on the circumstances. If you're looking at having an airplane sit out overnight on a on a ramp and get snowed on, uh, you know, the, it would probably be cheaper to get it into a hangar. You might spend a few hundred dollars putting the airplane in a hangar, but uh, you're 
still going to be coming out way ahead of uh, de-ice bill. Um, on the other hand, you could also say, uh, you know, for certain trips, it's not at all uncommon to have the cost of the trip, the total cost, uh, be anywhere between ten and fifty thousand uh, dollars, depending on where you're going and how long you're going to be there for, and that sort of thing. So, uh, if you're looking at a twenty thousand dollar trip and uh, you spend a thousand dollars de-icing to make that trip happen, and it becomes a twenty-one thousand dollar trip, um, that's just the price of doing business and and operating these aircraft. So. Uh, there's just two ways to look at it, and uh, it all depends on the circumstances you're dealing with and who's paying the bills and, and what they want to do, and that's uh, uh, what we take into account when we're de-icing. Um, but at the end of the day, safety is the number one priority, and um, you have to have a clean wing to fly, and uh, how you make that happen, whether that be spending time in a hangar or uh, delaying a flight or de-icing and getting going, um, those are your choices, and um, you have to decide what's going to work best for that individual trip.